Hi, this is Trent Clark, and welcome to Winners Find a Way. I am the CEO of Leadershipity, a serial entrepreneur. Most people know me because I spent uh, 12 years in professional baseball coaching for the Tigers, the Indians, and Angels, went to the World Series three times. So, super excited to talk and welcome my guest, Desmond Clark. How you Desmond- doing, sir? I, I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? Oh, man, it's, it's a beautiful day outside. Um, I feel good. So, hey, who, who, who can ask for anything better than that? <laughs> right, right. Well, let's, let's, let's get into this. We're going we're gonna to dive into some of those days that weren't so great, right? So, have you ever faced, you know, stiff adversity in your life? You felt like the losses are mounting. Um, you're struggling. Uh, and, and I love the quote from a book called, uh, the Four Disciplines of Execution, right? Uh, written by McChesney and Covey and came out of their institute. It says, winners, when shown data that they are losing, find a way to win. And I love that quote uh, because, you know, for entrepreneurs, for elite athletes, for the top 1% of folks, Desmond, you know, you face challenges, sacrifices. It gets tough out there along the way. And I know there was probably 10 times in my life I think, like, what am I doing out here? I'm, like, ready to shut her all down, right? So uh, real quickly, like, tell me. I, I want to introduce you, and we want to get into that a little bit as, as we talk. But let me introduce you a little bit before we get started. 10-plus years in the NFL, like, no joke. Played in the 2006 Super Bowl. You're a Florida guy. You're a native of Florida, right? And, uh, you know, Desmond Clark and I, you know, we are the same name. So people often, you know, recognize us as brothers, right? Like, I'm much older than Desmond, so they would, like, they would know that I'm his older brother, you know, with all this. If, if you see us close, like, he's a large, strong man, and I am a short, uh, much older man. So we're, we probably don't look so much. But um, your brother actually was also a quarterback at ECU, so another college ball player when you were you were a Wake Forest guy. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit. And then you've got entrepreneur, th- philanthropist, and the author of The Principles of Winning. Uh, what a lot of people don't know about you is when you retired from the Bears, you were number two in all-time catches of tight ends behind Hall of Famer and the coach, Ditka. Ditka. So welcome, buddy. No, again, I appreciate it, man. You, you got me on the platform, so I appreciate you doing that for me. Man, I love it, man. I love what you've done. Tell me a little bit about your brother. Is he older or younger? No, so my brother is younger. He He's still playing. He's still active. Oh, wow. Um, He he played three years in the, in the NFL. And wow. then his last six years, he's been playing in the CFL. And last year he started for Cal- uh, not Calgary, um, Ottawa Red Blacks. Um, but he, uh, like I said, six years is going to be his seventh year. So ten years as a professional athlete. That's wow. The- yeah. Another thing that most people don't know about you. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So let's let's talk about um, you know when, when I talk to you, you and I have been friends for a while. Uh, in, in, we were introduced by a mutual friend. Um, and t- talk to me about your why coming on the show, man. I, I talked to you like, Hey, winners find a way. Like what, what does that go into your mind? And like, what are you thinking right away? Like, hey, I'm going to go talk to Trent about this. What are you thinking? Man, m- most importantly, you know, I do this and I tell these stories and I give my perspective because I understand that people learn, you know, and grow from new information and new perspectives on information. And man, brother, we've been blessed, right? We've been blessed with a lot of different experiences that we can share with people. And and hopefully we are a conduit to people just being better and becoming better. It's a lot of of people out here that have greatness within them. But sometimes, I don't know about you, but like for me, it took other people to bring that out of me. Yes. And so- Yeah. I'm hoping every time that I'm on a show like yours and I write a book and I do the things that I do, hopefully I'm inspiring someone out there to bring out that greatness within them. So that's the reason why why, why I do this. I love that, man. I love that. And you know, it's funny when you hit on that point, like as, as parents where, 
you know, people pushed me and they pushed me hard, right? Like, and I think about that, like, I remember, like, it wasn't so great in that moment, but man, like how thankful I am for that now of like getting the best of me when they knew there was more and I didn't know there was more. Right. Right. So let's, let's take it back to the kids, the, 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 well, I don't know if there was ever a little Desmond Clark because this, this dude is one full man. I'm telling you, like, this guy's legit. But, like, younger Desmond Clark, like, tell me about that impact pivot moment, like, where you knew, like, hey, man, this is what I want to do. Like, I think I've got this greatness inside of me, and, and I'm going for something big. So, for me, it was more so of getting out of the situation that I was in because of, you know, family dynamics. You know, father being drug addicted, which left me, my mom, my brothers kind of just out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. Struggling. The moment was I didn't want to be and I didn't want to have to succumb to what I seen around me. Right. Half of my family on drugs. Most of my family living paycheck to paycheck and not even paycheck to paycheck. Food stamps to 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 paycheck to food stamps. Yeah. Um, those type of things. And at the age of 14, um, and I tell this story in my book, you know, my, my father was shot and he was blinded. So he used to actually pull me into the back room and ask me to help him light his crack pipe for him. And it was one day after doing that, I was walking home and I just said, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm going to be successful. And I told my mom that when I got home and I think at the age of 14, that was that pivotal moment. It didn't have anything to do with sports. It didn't have anything to do with playing football or none of that. It was, I just want to do something with my life. And and playing football and playing sports was that pathway for me to actually accomplish those those things. Yeah. Wow, that's 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 tough. Right. Like I, I think there's a lot of people that that can relate to your story. And there's a lot of people that can't imagine that story, right? Like being in that situation, like, you know, I, I think I've seen that on a made for TV movie, right? Like, but like, like, like I'm living this, right? And uh, I was involved with a, a charity called All Pro Dad, uh, which is over in Tampa, right down there. And um, Coach Dungy, right, who <laughs> you saw in that Super Bowl, I remember. And, um, and so, you know, that was one of the real challenging things that I found when I found kids of of broken homes and and some desperate times. Uh, one of the challenges was that a lot of kids felt like, hey, I'm gonna be what my father is. Like whether he was in prison or or made bad choices and and was gone or like. And I was I was so determined to make sure that kids knew like you don't have to make the same decisions that your father made, like he made his and right or wrong, like, Hey, I'm not here to judge. Right. Not my, not my position. I'm not qualified. Right. And so, but like, you don't have to, there are all sorts of different things for you that are possible. Right. Absolutely. And I think when people are exposed to something different, right. It's all about exposure. Mm. All they see is what they see. That's all that they understand. Yes. Right. You can't understand outside of anything that you experience. So again, it just goes back to, to what I said when, when you asked me the question, why do I do this? The same reason that you were doing it for all pro dads, to give these kids another experience, another piece of exposure to say, you know what, there, there's there's other things out here. And today on, on my post, I don't know when it's going out, but the question that I, that I uh, propose to people is, what was that life changing moment in your life that really say, okay, this is why I'm here where I'm at right now. And for me, you know, one of those things were going up to New York for a basketball camp. My high school went up there and it wasn't even a basketball camp. It was when we went on top of the world trade centers. Yeah. And, and we were on top of it, not looking out the window, but on top of it in the air. And I could look over all of New York City. And that's when I realized, I said, damn, it's a huge world out here. Yeah. So that, that opened me up. That expanded me. That, that gave me like a, a, it made me dream bigger than what yeah. I was dreaming because I was out of my element and I knew it was other elements out here. So <sighs> that, that piece of exposure helped me to grow, right? And if I wouldn't have had that piece of exposure, who knows 
how big or how, how small my thinking would have been without that. I love that. I love that. Like, and we, we talk about like changing your lens. You literally changed your view, right? Like, and you got that like right away. Let's real quickly before we move on, tell people right now, like where they can find you, Des, because I know people are looking for you. They probably want the book, Principles of Winning. I am going to give everybody a chance to do some Q&A with Des here and myself after the end. But like right now, where can they find you? They can, I mean, Des Clark 88 and that's D-E-Z Clark 88, um, Twitter, Instagram. I do a lot of stuff on LinkedIn. Just look up my name, look up my name, Desmond Clark. Facebook, same thing, Desmond Clark. I got a profile on there that's um, uh, my regular profile and then a, a professional page. So either one of those pages. But I'm I'm accessible, man. I always give out my phone number two eight six three five eight one five one six one, and they missed it, so I'm gonna say it one more time: eight six three five eight one five one six one. And people say, why do you do that? Like, don't you have they have this this thing called block on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, right, like, yeah. Yeah, you start blowing it up wrong. Like, hey, well, you know, we won't see you anymore, man. Like, yeah. So, you know, that's that's what people can find me at, and and I, I just try to be open to to being helpful to people whenever I can. That's awesome. So we're getting some questions in the chat, which we're going to save. If you're putting your questions in the chat, that's awesome. We're so glad you're on. Uh, please, um, we're going to go through those at the end, and I'm going to keep kind of moving through uh, Desmond right now, but. Um, let's, let's dive into this winners find a way, right? I, I'd like to hear about one of those moments where you were ab absolutely up against it. You know, you're losing <laughs> the data showing, you, you know, we're losing. And then you found a way to come back and win down, but not out. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, and it was after winning, right? It was after my 2001 season. 51 catches, six touchdowns, right? Tied for the league lead with Tony Gonzalez that year for six touchdowns for a tight end. I'm on cloud nine. I'm going into restricted free agency, signed a $1.2 million deal. I made it. I'm good. Wife is pregnant with twins. Just bought a new house. Everything is great. I'm going to yeah. be there. I'm going to be a Denver Bronco for the rest of my life. Mm. Right. They bring Shannon Sharp back. Okay, that's fine. Shannon Sharp only got a couple more years to play. I'm still, you know, getting paid. Everything is good. Boom, training camp happened. I break my arm. And I don't know if you guys can see that. Story. Oh, yeah, we can see that. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I break my arm. And, okay, I'm still good. I'm going to be out from, for, for six to eight, six weeks. I'll be okay. But as professional athletes, we know in training camp, when they come and say, hey, Desmond, grab your playbook. Coach needs to talk to oh, you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Time that is, right? Mm -hmm. You get cut. Mm -hmm. And it shocked the hell out of me when, when it happened because, you know, my ego and, and my statistics and just signing a deal told me I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. so I get cut and I have to go home and tell my pregnant wife with twins, I don't have a job. And I told her that and, and she rolled back over and said, stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, yeah, this isn't the time to be joking around, right? <laughs> real. Um, I, I don't usually be home at this time. So, right. <laughs> um, so now I don't understand how this stuff is, is supposed to play. I've never been in this position. Then I get picked up by Miami. So I go into Miami, no training camp. I come in the first week of the season. They drafted Randy McMichael in the fourth round. The dude is blowing up. Like he's all over ESPN making diving touchdowns. And, yeah. and, and it's his position once I get there. And they got another good tight end. And you know this. When you go to a different team, it's a different language. They got a new offense. This yep. is more from speaking um, English, so now you got to learn Spanish. Yeah. I didn't pick up the plays fast enough to get on the field, and I was struggling. So by week two or three, they just went on. And I'm just stuck. Like, I can't get on the field. I'm not going to be playing on, on offense at all. And I'm thinking, man, here I am thinking I'm going to be a starter, and I'm not even getting on the field. I'm third team, scout team, tight end. Hmm. I, I literally had to ask myself, so what do I do now? Because my ego is damaged, right? Right. And I'm not making $1.2 million. I'm making minimum now. I'm, so I just said to myself, let me just try to get on the field the best way I can. I just want to play football. I went to the special teams coach, and I had to beg the special teams coach to let me play special teams. And he finally relented and let me get on one special team. I did what I had to do on that special teams. 
Then that led to the second special teams, to the third special teams. And then by the end of the year, I was on all special teams. And I was dominating on special teams, right? So the year's over. I caught two passes that year after catching 51. Oof. And the Chicago Bears called me. I only had two offers, one from one from uh, Miami, which it was all incentive laden, um, and then Miami. I mean, and then Chicago. Chicago offered me six years, nine million, and at that time, that was top ten for tight ends. Yeah. And here's what they told me. They say, you know, we knew that you could be a good tight end, but we didn't understand the character that you had for playing football, which you showed playing special teams. Mm. And that was a lesson to me. Like, I didn't know that I was actually doing this, but when when you're not on top of your game, when when there are certain things that you can't do, there's always something that you can do. Mm. So, so I and and now I live by this. Don't let what you cannot do. And for me, I couldn't get on the field on offense, get in the way of what you can do. I could play special teams. Mm -hmm. I had to humble myself. Mm. I, I had to go and beg to play on special teams after, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to be a starter. But that was a lesson to me. Just never let what, what I cannot do interfere with what I can do. Always do what you can do within that situation to move the needle forward. It, it may not be moving as fast as you want to, but you still have to move it forward. And, and that's and man, that, that was one of the, the best lessons that I learned. Um, playing professional sports is getting cut and having to fight my way back to being looked at as a starter again. So many good lessons in that, man. Like <laughs> there's so many things there, right? That it's really good. So let's, you know, one of the things I'm really impressed with actually about the Bears is I tell a lot of kids as they're coming up, like, hey, everyone's watching all the time. Like, they're watching everything. They're watching how you get in line at the water cooler and how you take your turn or if you're bullying your way in, if, if you're uh, – how you treat the wait staff when you're out to dinner. Like, and now the Bears, to their credit, are watching this guy who they're going 51-2. to two, What gives? But wait a minute. Look, this guy's got 14 tackles on special teams. He did this. He did that. You know, you're a holder for my man Paul Edinger, you know, Spartan. So I just want to, you know, want to give Paul some props. <laughs> in Chicago, and he was my high school teammate. I helped him in high school. You didn't oh, know. <laughs> right, right. Like, come on, man. Like, see, there's Spartan connection right there. So um, that's awesome. So, you know, like, that's, that's the thing. Like, hey, willing to do the extra go the extra mile like hey I, I could sit here and wallow in what's not going right or i can step up and 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 try to figure it out and, and get going so let's let's kind of pivot to what do you think the one thing is that separates you from others i mean you catapulted to the one percent you know you know it's rare air man i mean what's the average in that league like 1.7 years or something like it's nothing right like it's a hello hey cup of coffee thanks for coming see you later right like that's a hard league 10 plus years what what separates you from others that got you that superpower i i would i would say probably just mindset and focus mm -hmm. because i never i never really took the the path of um, least resistance, so to speak. Um, I do believe that when you do the hard things early, you set yourself up to live easy <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> on the back end. And so I think it's just more so mindset because what, what people don't understand about me is that when I went into the league, I went into the league with a score of 37 out of 100 on my combine grade. Mm. And if you know how grading system works. Yep. It's a big fat F. I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. On all scales. On all scales. All 37 scales. out of 100 is not good. All right, folks? All Just to break that down. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm slow. I'm weak. Uh, I'm, I'm small. I'm 6'2 and 7 eighths. I was 252 pounds. And I bench pressed 225 12 times. We have freaking receivers and quarterbacks that do way more than oh, that. Oh, yeah. But I think because of the mindset of, hey, I'm, I'm not a finished product. I continue to get better and I'm not gonna settle for where I'm at right now. And I'm not gonna think that where I'm at right now is where I'm gonna stay. 
And again, don't let what you can't do get in, get in the way of what you can do. I couldn't, I couldn't run like Shannon Sharp. I wasn't big like Dwayne Carswell. They called him House. I couldn't do the things that they could do at that point. But what I could do is practice and continue to get better. Mm. And that was my mindset. Um, I can get there if I just keep putting in the effort and putting in the work. And I think that's the thing that set me apart because you know this, you, you played a, with a lot of great players and you played with a lot of potential great players, but they stopped putting in the work and, 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 and they settled to, I'm as good as I, I want to be, mm. I don't want to get no better. And then what happens? Somebody else comes up and yeah. Gone. Yeah, I, I often say, like, the best people... People often ask me, like, hey, who's the best player you ever coached? And I'm like, oh, you don't know him. And, like, what do you mean? Like, I'm like, oh, like, I saw absolutely fabulous athletes who just stopped getting better. They couldn't do the things, like, you're talking about. Couldn't... No self-control, right? No self-discipline. So other people always had to discipline them, right? And it was just exhausting. And that foundation of, hey, how do I carry myself to do the work and, and be dis disciplined and, and persevere through hard things? And, um, and, and, you know, talent, talent's just one factor. And you know, it's funny because you're one of those guys, like the talent's crazy, right? Like you so much talent. And, and, and the ability in between, each, it's fractional. Right, like it's fractional, and you're you're another one of these cases of you know you and Brady, right? Like these poor combines, quote unquote, poor, right? But that weren't staggering off the chart with lots of success, right? We come back to that grit and that effort, and how much that counts, and that sustainability in that continued effort as skill just continues to raise with 100% effort, 100% effort, and it just keeps rising up. Right, right. And, and, and that's what it's all about, just continued improvement. And before I forget about it, something just came back in my mind. You were speaking earlier about um, people are always watching, right? Yeah. And, and, I, and I live by this. Anything that you do should be how everything you do, which mm. means that your standard is your standard. You don't lower your standard over here and then raise your standard over here. No, yeah. the standard should be the same. No matter if, if you know, you're, you're talking to someone on the streets or talking to the president, mm. how you work when no one is looking or how you work out with your teammates, you should have the same standard all the time. I love that, man. I, I love that because you do see it. And that's a great lesson for kids, right? Because we do have those, hey, I'm in class with all the college prep work and all the high level classes and I carry myself this way with them. You know, hey, with my buddies down at you know at the gym, and when we're out at the club, we're over here like, wait, no, 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 wait a minute, let me get a to because I like what you said that it's it's your standard, right? It's not it's not anybody else's. You have to put your name on that. You have to own that standard, and it should be consistent. And I'm always shocked at how many people think like, hey, when Des are watching. Des and Trent are watching, so I'm, I'm, I'm busting my butt. And then they think when we turn our back, like nobody else is watching and nobody else sees it, and they take, you know, five reps off. Like, right. wait a minute, man. Like, people are always watching. And here's the thing. If you want to be in, in the 1%, if, if you want to sustain a certain level of success and be able to maintain it, it doesn't matter who's watching. You know. <laughs> you know if you're putting in the work. That's right. All that should matter. Like, so, so this morning, um, I, I work out with my daughter in the morning and um, somebody in that class hit 100% output, right? I'm like, who the hell hit 100%? Because you got on the heart morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I go back. I, I, I drop my daughter off to school and I always go back for a second workout. But I was like, all right, I want to hit 100%. I, I haven't done it yet. So I went in and I'm working, I'm doing the box, I'm doing jumps and everything. And and I get up to 92, 93, 94%. And I'm going, woo, 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 woo. And I get up to 96%, but I was like, ah, oh, I don't have any <laughs> but, but then I started thinking, man, you, you, you're a little sick. Like you're in here by yourself. And it doesn't, and to me, it didn't matter who's seen it. It was right. just me and me that I was pushing the hardest 
to hit that 100%. Mm. I, I wasn't trying to prove it to nobody but myself. Love it. And I, I love it. I get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Hey, you got next week. You got next week, Des. It's coming. It's coming for you. So let's talk about, um, you know, a lot of folks can't get overcome. You know, when, when, when they get overcome, they can't get back up, right? We always talk about fall down seven and get up eight, right? But, man, when you're down, like, it hurts. Like, and there's a lot of responses to that. There's anger. There's frustration. There's, there's, there's a, you know, I have a, a little ebook we did about the confidence game, right? And you see it in athletes as like confidence leaves their body, right? And I'm going to have you talk to that a little bit later. One of our, one of our folks, they want to see you talk about like the speed of the game and how that language, how fast it is, is going. And we're going to have you talk about that in a little bit. But when it's down, um, tell me like when you were there, and you and you could see or and you could feel that confidence being lost. Like, what what do you think? Knowing what you know now, what would you do differently when that hits? What would you do? What 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 would be your go to when it when it starts trending the wrong way? Something that always. First of all, I never did understand that you fall down seven times, you get up eight. Because if you fall down, you get up. You fall down, you get up. You fall down, you get up. You fall down seven times, you're gonna get up seven times. I never did understand that. Um, so <laughs> I, I'm always when people, and, and I know that's just something that we say, but whoever made that up, they need to go back and check that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, the thing that I always did, and not and not just in sports, Trent. This this is in life. This this is this is one of those life things where when you feel like you're not on your game, when you feel like you're not performing. You, I, I always did something what I call take self inventory, right? Like, okay. what's, what's really going on with me? Mm. Let's sit here and let me let me figure this out. And really, it's all about me questioning what am I what am I doing from day to day? What what are those habits that that I may be thinking I'm I'm performing and putting in the effort, but let me just check and let me just really be honest with myself. Am I really doing what I think I'm doing? Mm. That's that's something that that's always got me back to level, right? Okay. Um, and and this is a personal story. Even when I was going through my second divorce in 2017, it was the end of 2016 when I said, you know what? I talk about my five Fs: faith, family, fitness, finances, and fun. Because life for me at that point, it, it wasn't good. Like. I'm struggling. And I, and I had to sit down and say, all right, let's talk about faith. You know, am I doing the stuff that I preach that I say mm -hmm. it takes to be successful with my faith? Am I doing the stuff with my family that I say it takes to be successful? The same thing with fitness, the same thing with my finances. And, you know, I leave fun out because when you got all those other four things in place, then you can have a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And I had to be honest with myself. I was like, no, the faith is not there. You know what? I'm not talking to my kids as much as I should be talking to my kids. Fitness, I was overweight. I was 270 pounds when I'm ordinarily around 250. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. financially, I was screwed up. And, and, and January 1st of 2017, you know, when, when everybody makes their, you know. Uh, yeah, that resolution. <laughs> For me, it was a new, a renewed life resolution. And I checked myself and I was like, I got to put these things in order. These are the things that when I send out my little note cards to people, it's on the back and I'm telling everybody else about these things, but I'm not living hmm. what I'm preaching. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not performing the habits that, that I talk about, that I, that I truly believe in. So when things stopped going right for me, I started looking at the things that I truly believe in, my values and, and things like that and say, you know, am I performing these things at the level that I need to to be successful? So mm -hmm. that, that's what I do. I, I call it just taking self inventory. Well, let, let me recap that real quick because I love it. The five F's are the self inventory, right? Like, I mean, that is locked in. So quiet time, like I want to take this time for me, you know, you sit alone. I need to go and take this inventory for me. And you've got a structure with that with your five S's that are knockout man like that's that's big time right and uh and of course you can read about that in the book right by the way so um let's talk a little bit about uh the one value belief action 
that you took when you were down that turned things for you? And, and what I heard you say, and it may be different, but what I heard you say before was that one thing was you, you turn to, uh, I think it was humility, right? Like I can sit here and say, well, you know, I should be the starter, I should, but I'll humble myself and go do what I can do. But maybe, maybe I'm not hearing more. Maybe there's more to that. Yeah, I, I think when, when like, you boil it all down and come to the essence of everything, it's all about you know, your name and your word. Who, who are you? Mm-hmm. Look at yourself, like, who, who am I really? And that's hard to do because we got so many people, especially being professional athletes, and it doesn't matter if, if you like got a high paying job, an important position in society, you have so many people telling you, you're great, you're great, you're great. Oh man, oh man, like, oh, <laughs> you know, you want, oh, Desmond, <laughs> you know, you, you call fit, you, all, all of that stuff, right? And then you really have to sit back and say, you know, who am I as a person? What, what does my name and my word mean mm. importantly to me? And what, and what is that representative of? What, and, and, and I call it brand a lot. What's my personal brand? Yeah. And, what do I stand for? Like what, yeah, what, what and, I, and am I living it? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about um, that one belief, value, other actions that you'd recommend to others on their journey when things get hard and they're on the road to being elite. Like they're going to get, they're going to get some, some setback, right? This, the brand, the standard critical, mm-hmm. right? Um, there may be some humility involved, right? And be okay with that. Like humility to me is not a sign of weakness. And I know like there's a, there's a challenge at that top level because confidence can bleed to arrogance in, in a moment, right? And quite frankly, that confidence is so edgy because it'll, it'll slip up into arrogance. It'll slip down into like gone like it just went through the tub drain like wait a minute who let the water out (laughs) like where did my confidence go you know like just like that so if you were saying to somebody right now as they go and they're on the road to being elite what's that what's that one quality that one action that they're going to absolutely need on this journey i'm I'm gonna say that the thing that they need to do is they need to write it down and what what i'm talking about Mm. now you know just like i said i I mean, I see, I see my purpose statement all the time. I see my five Fs all the time. I know what I'm about, so I can always go back to that. That, that keeps me grounded. It, it gives me purpose. It, it gives me navigation. Um, and and to, to develop something that you can always go back to to say, you know what? When I need to get going, I go back to this, you know? And for me, I, I wrote down the things that were valuable, the things that are important to me. The, you know what? How did I get here? I got mm-hmm. here on these things right here. You That's know, right. I got here by thinking like this. I journal a lot. Like um, I remember, um, I was just reading a few weeks ago in 2013. I was journaling about how I didn't have the, that 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 leader. I didn't have anybody I could look up to because I had just retired from the league and I didn't have that structure. Yeah. I know I was able to play 12 years in the league because I had good coaches, right? Yeah. And I went and I, and I looked at those coaches for (laughs) advice, for the know-how, for that. I didn't have that. So I'm looking, I was like, man, I have that now, but I wrote, I was writing it down and I remember how I was successful. So I tried to duplicate that in in today's life and i've yeah. been able to do that i got so many wonderful people around me now that help me out that coach me that gives me the wisdom and all that stuff just like when i played football so just write the stuff down now as you're going through it so you can always go back to it and understand how did you get to where you're at mm. that's awesome so i love it man i i think when you write it down and you you just play those goals i i like that quote you know um plan the work and then work the plan you know so so if you write it down you plan the work right like you get down and say hey this is what i'm about you know what got you and i like the fact that taking an inventory also of what got you here 
like those success patterns, what is our strengths and how do those things, they'll, they'll transition and translate into other skills. You could take that hard work and effort and you've done it in your insurance company. You've done it in your authorship and, and your writing and you've done it in your speaking business. Like you've uh, used those skills and, and use that. I love that about you. Um, Man, it's uh, it's 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 a great walk, Des, as we go through this. Let's let's finish up with um, a time. Any anything anything else that you want to say? The best way to win is there something that you want to share with the listeners that we did not touch on today? That maybe one of those characteristics that you think pretty critical um, that would add value to anyone as they drive in on their journey for that one percent. Oh man, and I'm, I'm I'm looking at it, and I wish I could turn it around and show it to you, but that other side is a mess. <laughs> um, I'm looking at my calendar right now and it says always choose your standards over your feelings. And that's over your mean. feelings? Over your feelings. Okay. Because our feelings have us yeah. doing this, right? Yeah, they, they often they often pull us along as opposed to our standards driving We're us. Human, right? We're gonna have feelings. We're humans. But like we talked about earlier, your standards are here. And you got to rely on your standards to, to, to pull you through, not your feelings. Your feelings will trick you. If somebody yeah. says the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, you feel a certain way. If somebody mm-hmm. say the right thing or, or overinflate your ego, you could be feeling the wrong way. What's the standard? Always choose your standard over your feelings. I love that. I love that. Share your uh, where they can find you again here. Ah, oh, Des Clark 88, D E Z C L A R K 88 on Instagram and Twitter, and then Desmond Clark on Facebook and on LinkedIn. So, and I encourage everybody to go to LinkedIn. Uh, that's where I do most of my stuff, uh, most of my writing, and most of my posts, but um, I'm active on all, all of them. That's perfect. I'm Trent Clark, uh, CEO of Leadershipity. You can find us at leadershipity.com. We are on Instagram, Twitter, Trent M. Clark. I am also on LinkedIn a lot uh, as well. You can find me almost anything at Trent M. Clark or Leadershipity. And and please, you know, you're here at our our YouTube channel of Leadershipity. We always try to provide high quality content. People like world class, like uh, Desmond Clark here. So, and look for our upcoming ebook, The Pyramid of Leadershipity, which is uh, it's going to be super exciting. You're always welcome to DM or email me. I am at Trent at leadershipity.com. Um, unlike Des, I don't give out my phone number. <laughs> I'm now thinking about it, Des. I'm like, man, maybe I should be giving out my phone number. But um, if you enjoyed today's episode, continue to listen. Winners find a way. Give us five stars. Uh, work hard to, de- to deliver value and stories of our 1% leaders around us uh, for every episode. So thrilled Des could join us. Um, I'm going to leave you this last one, Des. Quote of the day. What's your kind of favorite quote, like your go-to, man? Before we, We're going to do Q&A, but I want to give your, your go-to uh, verse or quote, whatever you go to. I, I think I might have already said it. Um... Man, I said a lot of them. Right? Yeah, yeah, you said some good ones, right? Right. But but here here here's one. Here's one that I love. You never reach the level of your expectations. You always fall to the level of your training. Mm. So, yeah, that's. I think that came out of the seals, right? Like they were like. Hey, you'll only go to where you're trained. I love that. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go to a little Bible verse today. I'm gonna go to Hebrews twelve eleven. No discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful later on however it will produce a harvest of righteousness and peace for those that are trained by it we talked a lot today about training it up doing the work taking the action after you plan that action and Desmond, you're a living testament of a guy who actually just stood through it went through the action did the hard work came back again and again didn't let them tell you no listen i I mean i think a lot of people come out of the combine at 37 out of 100 and say well i guess this isn't going to be for me no one may will take a shot on me right right right. so i love that uh you persevered so real quick what was that verse again because i I need to i need to catch that one yeah uh, hebrews 12 11. 11. no discipline seems pleasant at the time but pain often painful later on however it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those that have been trained by it 
And I think that's all of us, right? We don't, you know, man, you, you and I, I, I laugh because when, when people ask me about like, oh man, you guys must have really suffered through that hill running and people are vomiting, right? Like it's hard. Like, man, I look back at that. Like, hey, when Des and I were in that, like, hey, man, you, you go to something great. You win the conference title. Like I never looked back on that as chronic pain. That's acute pain to me. Like it hurt in the moment. But like the chronic pain is regret, right? Like that the, the the pain of discipline or the pain of regret, you choose, right? And that pain of discipline is acute. It doesn't last that long. The chronic is the regret, like, ah, oh, I shoulda, woulda, coulda. I wish I woulda done this. I, I didn't have the discipline at the time. And I should have been listening to those who were training me and re helping me reach that potential. I'll, I'll always talk about that. But let's get to some Q and A for for Des, like um, who when you were coming up, you talked about that that view of the top. But was there a person that you looked for for inspiration? Absolutely, that was my mom. Oh yeah, sure. Um, she was that that rock, right? And and I actually kind of thought about what that actually means because we sell a lot of stuff and it's like, what does that really mean? But that rock is like something that's, a move. It, it doesn't move, it's there. It can, it can, you know, go through all of the stormy weather and it's there. And that's who she was for me. And she gave me that example of how to live life, like how to be steady. You know what I'm saying? When when my when my dad left, which my dad, you know, he came back and he's a wonderful dad now. Um, but for you know a 10 year period, <laughs> I don't know. Right. Um, yeah. But um, she built herself up from where we were basically, you know, we didn't have a place to live and and then didn't have lights and that food to giving us a really good life at the end at the end of our teenage years. And just seeing how she did that over time, just constantly working and constantly building, always that she was my inspiration, and she was someone who I always looked to. Yeah, that question was from Prince, and thank you, Prince. I appreciate that. I got a question from uh, it's actually from a company. I don't know who's on there uh, from the Allegra Marketing. Maybe somebody who knows you. I don't yeah, know. I, I know that guy. Oh, you do? Because <laughs> they uh, they were they had heard you speak before on the locker room tour, right? And right. and you described that walkthrough of how fast like a play actually happens in the NFL and like the absolute speed of this going on. And then and then you talked about before you hit on it as like, hey, going to a new team, man. I just went from English to Spanish and I don't and I don't know the language, man. Like so, talk walk us through that. Okay, so that's Brian, by the way, at Allegra. I appreciate you tuning in, Brian, and keep tuning in. All right, man. Um, Mr. Clark here. But what I was telling him, I was saying, it's not all always about athletic prowess. To play the professional game, you got to be able to think, right? And I was telling him how we call a place. Hey, let's go deuce right, um, deuce right, uh, X, X um, motion, uh, 225, X go, Y flare. You know, boom, and we got to get out of the huddle. That's yeah. it. And then we go to the line, right? And as the quarterback is going, blue 19. All right, now I got to decide. All right, I got to maneuver around this linebacker, right? And then blue 19. And then he moves. And then the whole defense just shift, right? So yeah. now I got to do something else. And now set hut. And then they rotate to something else. And, and right before the snap, I was supposed to run a corner route where I break it high. But now they just blitz, right? And so now I got to think about, my God, he just blitz. So when he blitz, he's not going to be picked up. He's going free to the quarterback. So instead of running the corner route, I now have to run an out route and come out of it real quick so the quarterback has somewhere to throw the ball to because I'm the hot route. That's right. All of that happened in a matter of five seconds. Oh, yeah, or less, or less, right? Like, or less. Like, know, right? And that's with the cadence, with him going blue 19. Yeah. But once the ball snaps, all of that move, it, that happens in a second. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So you have to be able to process information quickly to be a professional. And you know this, trying to hit a freaking curveball. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like, yeah, especially when you're looking dead heat, man. You're looking 100, and all of a sudden, it's filthy, right? Right. So that's, that's what Yeah, split. Yeah, I think that split-second adjustment, like, it's probably 
one of the things that athletes underestimate that superpower in the real world, their ability, their adaptability, because you really get that from sports. You watch a lot of film and you learn what's about to happen. And adaptability actually becomes a little bit of second nature mm -hmm. because as you keep doing, and of course you get so many reps at being adaptable, right? Whereas other people like, Hey, we had one thing change last year. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. We had five things change that last play. Like it's so, it's so odd that it, it's a, it's definitely a superpower of athletes that I think even as ourselves, we underestimate if that's fair. Right. No, it, it, we, we really do. Um, to be able, one, one of the things that I always try to do, if it don't make sense, it, it, it doesn't make sense. Right. So processing information out here in the real world is something that I rely on heavily. If it, if all the information makes sense, then it makes sense. If it doesn't, you know, it doesn't. And then, and then I have to question it. That's right. So, um, that's something that I definitely use, but I don't necessarily think about it like I do playing sports. Mm. All right. Next question from uh, New Gen. Uh, what prince? What best principle you can share for me to win? You, you've already named a lot, right? Like, uh, and, and and if you've got something, I'm good. You got the principles of winning, so you got lots of them, right? Um, and, and I know you talked about uh, with me. Here's, here's, yeah, 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 yeah. here's the whole list of them. Yeah, right? Right? Like, you, you know, we might have to put the hot list up on, uh, on, the, on the YouTube page so that everybody can see, you know, Des, Des Clark's, you know, all the winning principles. Because you're right. It's hard to point to one. But if you could. First of all, let me, let me just define principle for someone. Principle... Principles are things that are irrefutable. Mm. You can't argue with it. You, you cannot argue with it. Because if you flip it over and do the opposite, it's going to have a totally like detrimental effect, right? So yeah. Un first, understand that. And that's good. That's good clarity. That's, that's good. I like that. Now... I just looked at one and one of those things that that I really believe in is that the game is won in the preparation. Mm. A lot of people think, all right, they just go out on the field and play. If we just went out on the field and played, it'll look like total chaos. There's so much preparation that goes into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and Saturday before we get to Sunday. That's where the game is won. Because if we don't know what to do, if I don't know how to break off that hot route, if I don't know how to recognize that blitz, if I don't know my blocking assignments, I don't know how to adjust, there's no way that we can win the game. But all that came in preparation. So the game is actually one in preparation, not only in sports, but in life also. Love it. Love it. I, you know, I'm reminded of uh, Harvey McKay. He was former owner of the Twins, entrepreneur, wrote some great books. You might have heard of, uh, you know, Beware of the Naked Man Who Offers You a Shirt. He had some great titles. He said something right up your line, Desmond, that I, I that just you made me think of that, where he said everybody wants to win the day of the game, but few are willing to prepare for it. And I was like, you know, man, that's that's right. Everyone's sitting next to me. He's like, "Yeah, man, I hope we, I hope we win." I'm like, "Man, hope's not a strategy. We needed to be doing all that work back there because if we come to this now, like, I don't like our chances. Like, right? That's so good, uh, man. Preparation, right? Like, the, so, so for you out there, new gen, like that principle. It, it, it's not. It's this isn't. This is immutable, right? An immutable principle. If you want to be elite. You will have to prepare. That's just, that's the principle. And I love it, man. That's that's so strong, Des. Um, okay, from, from Natnas, I've got, uh, how do you deal with nerves when dealing with something new? Or, or man, you played in the Super Bowl, man. People always ask me about the big, you know, I coach in three World Series. People are freaking out, right? Like, it's it's the go, man. Like And, and in football, it's really even bigger. At least in, in, at least in baseball, you got to win four of them, right? Like, in football, it's one. It's one and done. Like, man, I hope the things go well. And heaven forbid it rains, right? And so, you know, the conditions can change, adaptability. Your nerves are going crazy. Talk to us about what you do when it's new and, 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 and then after football and you got to adjust, How, what do you do? Well, first of all, Trent, you just hit me in my heart because <laughs> the only Super Bowl that it ever rained in was the Super Bowl that I played in. Right. So, oh, my God. So, But those nerves, right, it, 
again, we're human. Here's, here's one way to not have as, as many nerves on game day, go back to preparation. Because mm. you're ready for it, you're ready for it. But still with that, you still have nerves that's, that's bubbling up. But you just gotta embrace it. You just gotta, you, don't try to fight it. It's, it's okay that you got butterflies. Yeah. I play with some players that they threw up before every game. Yeah. That they were gonna throw up before every game. They embrace it. That was part of their routine, right? I yeah. Throw up before the game so I can get rid of the nerves. Yeah. So I just say embrace it. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just human nature. We get nervous when when we have big things coming up, when we have to have that big sales presentation, or you know, we we we're getting ready to take that test for that new for the new license. Nerves are gonna come. It's okay. And yeah. Embrace it and just know that that's part of it. Don't 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 let it take you down a path that that's that it doesn't have to take you down. That's when the nerves become something that that's negative. When you mm-hmm. start letting it, letting it mess with your mind and and oh man, I'm I'm, I'm nervous. I'm yeah. You suppose you're supposed to be nervous. This yeah. Is big. This is huge. You're gonna be nervous. So yeah. just be nervous and understand that that's part of it. Don't try to fight it. But the the like going back to it, one of the ways that you can kind of curb it is just being prepared. Yeah, I love that, man. I, I love that. And I think what we know now, right, is those nerves serve us. Like your nervous system heightens up, your awareness, your your vision, everything changes because of those nerves. That nervous system operating for you is actually serving you if you can get it to serve you, right? And so by embracing it, I love that. As soon as you said the vomit, I was thinking of remember the Titans, you know, the coach's first game and he's over behind the, you know, behind the wall, you know, man, like we get nervous, but the training does take over, right? Like every single time, because my guess is that two minutes into that game, your only focus is doing your job to the best of your ability and making every rep count to the best. Like you don't take a playoff. You don't, you know, do anything that you, you wouldn't normally do. And because you've learned how to do it right so many times, your body knows exactly what needs to do. And so now these nerves that serve you in this situation actually heighten the awareness of your vision, your speed. You can use it, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and going back to the Super Bowl, Trent, I was coming out of that tunnel. Man, and seeing all, all those bulbs flashing and stuff. The excitement, it, it, was, it was probably more excitement that turned into nerves, right? Because yeah. a young man, you dream about this. Yes. And here you are walking into your dream. Yeah. You yeah. Right. I was nervous and excited. And and I actually had to go to the sideline and just breathe and tell myself, this is just a football game. Mm. And then we returned to opening kickoff. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah, Devin. Yeah, Devin has to. Okay. Yeah. So just, just breathe, calm down, and just do your job. That's so good, man. That is so good. And it's funny. And, and you, and you hear that. I love that, that people say that, right? They go like, Hey, yeah. How you doing? Living the dream. No, you were actually living the dream. <laughs> like, like this is what you'd hoped for your whole life. And now all of a sudden, like, like the moments, like your, your dreams have hit a reality. Like, and you know what does is like so few people actually get to experience that, right? Right. Like it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. If you can't embrace that in that moment, something's wrong, right? And just and just think about like people who who they're having their first kid. Like that's yeah. one of those moments, right? Oh, yeah. God, what am I? Ooh, she is coming out. <laughs> yeah, like this is actually gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be nervous, right? Yeah. I've never experienced this before. What do I do now that she is here? Right. My goodness. So just embrace it, man, and, and, and just know it's part of the game. That's so good. Well, uh, so glad, Des, that you could uh, spend some time with us. I know your time's valuable, so very thankful that we could get this time together, man. I learned a lot, man. I love it. I love it so much just hearing you talk about challenges. And, you know, and I think that uh, – as, as we look about that, there's sacrifices along the way. Don't ever think that, um, you know, winners, is, it all comes easy. It, it, it doesn't. And uh, I'm so thankful, Des, for you today. Uh, so 
Um, lastly, I'd like to say, uh, hope you'll join us next Friday, same time, 1230 uh, Eastern time on our Leadershipity YouTube channel where we will welcome Scott Spezio. Scott Spezio is a good friend of mine. I coached him back with the Angels. He's a two-time World Series champion, and he has the distinguished honor of him and his father are the only father-sons who have won a world championship. So, yeah, kind of cool in MLB, right? And for the same team with the Cardinals. So it's uh, pretty exciting. So excited to have him on and talk about uh, some things that Scott's gone through. So, Des, can't thank you enough for being here. And I really appreciate everything and wish you the best. And may God bless you always. Yes, I appreciate it, man. You keep doing what you're doing. Keep leading from the front front like you do. And on these interviews, man, just keep pulling, pulling these things out of these people. So, you know, hopefully... You know, these things can change paradigms and change lives. Mm. All right. Amen to that, right? Amen to that. For our viewers, hope to see you next time. And thank you for joining us on Winners Find a Way. All right, buddy. We're off live. You're off, man.